Okay, so picking up on polynomial inequalities and finding the zeros of critical values. Um, we haven't spent a lot of time on this. I'm gonna spend an, I'm gonna spend another video talking about just finding the zeros. Um, so p over q is something that hopefully you've heard of before. If not, that's okay. We're gonna go over it. It is last over first. So you're looking at whatever you're given last, which in this case is 12, and whatever we're giving first, which is two x cubed. So, but we're just looking at the coefficient. So we've got 12 and two. So once we put that up, we find the factors of each. So you put the last over the first, and then you find the factors of each one. So for 12, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. All right, and these could be positive or negative. Always, always, always positive or negative. And in the bottom, we have 1 or 2. All right, so that means we could use 1 over 1, 1 over uh, 1, over 1 half, 2 over 1, 1, which is 2 over 2. Um, you have several different combinations that you can use. A lot of people say that you guess and check to find 1, and you just you do it. You use synthetic division, and you go from there. We're not going to do that. Okay, once you have all these options, I recommend always, always, always graphing this function. Do not include the less than or equal to 0, but just graph what you're given, which I've already done. And we're going to see which x values show on the graph that that are up here. So from what we can see, we have, and I already went ahead and graphed it, I've got negative two or six here um, that I can see. Negative two or six. Both of these are actually possibilities that we could use. I'm gonna use negative two, um, and you could use either one. Let me make that clear. You could use either one. Um, you're gonna do synthetic division. I've got two, negative nine, negative 20, and positive 12. Some of them will not give you a nice uh, factor when you divide using synthetic division, but most of the time you will. So we pull that two down. We've got negative four, which gives me negative 13 times negative two gives me 26. Positive six times negative two is negative 12 and we're left with zero. So that's a really nice one. Um, so we have two X squared minus 13 X plus six which obviously becomes, um, let's see, we have, we have x or negative 2, which is x plus 2. So we can't forget to include that one. Um, and then when it comes to factoring this one here, we have 2x squared. So we're going to have a 2x, and we're just going to have an x here. If 6 times 2 would be 12, and then together they should equal 13. So obviously we would use 12 and 1. Um, one of them will have to be multiplied by 2, which is going to have to be um, something that we can double. Uh, we can't really double like 0.5, so we would have to use 6 and then 1 here. Um, and then because we have negative 13x, we would have them both be negative. Together they would be positive 6. All right, so our x values would be negative 2, 1 half, and six. Once we do that, we'll plug those in on the number line as well. Negative two, one half, and six. And we're looking for values that are less than zero, less than or equal to zero. So we're going to find our negative ones. Just to save some time, I went ahead and did that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark them as they were. Um, I plugged in one here, I think eight over here, zero and then like negative four, and that gives us these. So we're looking for the negative ones. So we will use this portion and this portion of the timeline, of the number line. All right, um, and that is how you find the zeros. All right, down on example four. This one is very simple. It says to solve with the aid of a graphing calculator. When you plug this in, you will get a graph like this one. And because we are looking for y values that are less than or equal to the graph, that's gonna include everything that is underneath the given graph. 